Hello there and welcome to my workshop. This slice of trunk of a tree, um, in actual fact this is quite a, a small tree for, for these uh, type. This is a hue and pine tree grown in southern Tasmania. Um, I have had this piece, in actual fact I've got four pieces like this, uh, and I've had this for over 10 years, probably over 15 years. And they have been in one corner of my workshop, just sitting there drying out. Now, the tree was fallen probably 20 years before that, before I, I got them, because they were sat in someone else's workshop. And I have said this previously on some of my other videos, how old these trees are. This tree is way over a thousand years old, probably more than 1500 years old. Um, the larger trees, obviously with the trunk yay wide, they can live up to 4,000 years old. And it's a fact. Now I'll, I'll just, what I've actually done is I've cleaned up just this part here and I'll show you the growth rings. Now so you can see a little better, I'm just going to put a bit of cedar oil on here that will show it up a little bit better, I think. Okay, and we'll get a bit more light on it as well. And I'll get a magnifying glass. Now I don't know where the camera is seeing that. Let me just I don't know whether the camera's picking that up. I don't know whether it's worth doing that even, but I, I actually need it to see myself. Center of the tree is here. And the growth rings here, right in the center, are very, very small. Let's get something to measure with. And, uh, here we go, center of the tree. Let's just put the camera down a bit, see what I'm... And I'll zoom in a bit. I'm going to do this, I just want to prove a point to some of the people that written in and said, ah, uh, that's total hogwash. Well, it's not. <laughs> okay, center of the tree. You can see that from the center of the tree that you cannot actually distinguish the growth rings because they're so close together. Um, they're actually minute. Out here they get a little larger and then they get very, very much, much smaller. Um, so the life cycle or the growth cycle of this hewn pine varies from decade to decade. But you'll see that they're very, very, very small here. Out at the top here, they're near microscopic. So the older the tree gets, the growing slows down slower and slower and slower and slower and slower as you as the tree gets older. So if you had microscope you could be able to count these rings and it would total up to between oh, 1500 to 2000. So this tree is between 1500 and 2000 years old and it's a fact you can see how tightly packed they are yourself. And as the tree gets older, the growth rings get more tightly packed, tightly packed, till they get microscopic out here and you, can't ha you cannot detect them with the human eye. It just blends all into one. And you can, s you can see that here. Okay, so now we have to prepare this to go on the lathe because being such a, a very expensive piece of wood, 
um, you know we need to be sure that we, we hold it correctly and um, there is a crack here I think it's superficial but we won't know until we we get into it so this is going to be the inside of the bowl and the mouth is going to be around here and we're going to, we're going to make the largest uh, mouth possible and we might even make it a natural edge bowl we'll just have to see how it turns out uh, so we're going to put the face plate on here screw it on because you know we'll hollow this out uh, afterwards so it doesn't matter what we screw into here oh these uh, in the background uh, these are three pieces uh, of really knotty gnarly very heavy pieces of wood and this is off a giant sequoia tree which uh, will be the subject of uh, probably about six videos <laughs> you know separate machining separate uh, parts of it over the next year so they'll be up and coming they'll be very interesting okay I use a um, big cast steel uh, face plate um, I like you know I like my tools to be long-lasting and um, beef <laughs> or beefy so now what I because this is an odd shape okay you just sort of eye it up um, get it the best you can which is about there I think then I use these very very heavy-duty screws <laughs> Okay, so we've got a dry flange or mounting flange now, mounted on our piece of, or our block of wood. Um, now we're going to mount it on the lathe. Now, I've lost count of the amount of turners that should know better that are producing videos out there. They get their piece of wood on whether it's a chuck or a face plate like this and they offer it up to the thread on the end of the drive shaft here and they switch the damn lathe on to wind for the motor to wind the thread in don't do it you're gonna lose that losing fingers or arms so don't take any notice of what you see them doing because it's wrong okay the correct way is just get a packing piece of wood or something so you don't have to take the full weight of it all the time and just offer this thread up to this threaded boss here and on most good lays there is a handle here that it's the drive shaft, that, drive shaft that's extended out and you can wind it in manually then when you're finished there should be a locking mechanism here to stop you putting your hand on it on the larger lathes like this anyway so that's what we're going to do now put this on properly just a little bit too high that's better offer it up to the thread and just wind it on it's as easy as that okay having wound it on I've just found that it's just fouling my lathe just there and just there so I'm just going to take the slightest amount off so I can get this revolving around in my lathe. Now this is everybody's favorite tool that I'm judging by the comments I've seen 
uh, on some of my videos. I really like this tool. And it makes quick work of that. And now this piece. I want to point out because uh, there has been some comments uh, regarding it. I wear it's a rag actually, <laughs> a clean one. Um, the mic is just here, okay, and I have lost a mic through shavings, whether they've been damp or what, but I've, I lost a mic, it stopped working. Um, but you will get some, you know, noise with me moving okay so that's what it is I'm sorry I can't do much about that so anyway on with the turning what you need to do especially turning something like this now whenever you're wood turning you need to take great care no matter what it is but as the pieces of work get larger you need to take even more care because the larger the piece, the bigger the problems you can get. Okay, so, you know, be sure that it's spinning freely. Okay, and um, start your lathe up slowly. And then build the speed up until you are comfortable. And the lathe isn't dancing around your workshop. So, because uh, th that's not a good idea at all. Um, so, I'm coming in as close as I dare. Now, that's about um, a minimum of a quarter of an inch because this isn't exactly flat. It's uh, sort of varying. Um, and the maximum gap here is about three quarters of an inch. Um, you know, the, the closer that you can get in to, to your material, uh, the less uh, should we say, you know, sort of motion is uh, imparted onto your, your, your chisel and you. So, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working away on this corner uh, and then maybe down on here just to flatten it off. Because what I'm going to do, I am going to make a tenon to fit my chuck on the inside here. Okay. And so that's what we're going to hold it from eventually, and that's going to be the base of the, the presentation bowl um, for when I scallop the inside out. So, now another word on safety always wear protect, protection for your eyes. Okay, these are not glass, they're, uh, they're acrylic lenses, so they don't smash backed up with absolutely one of these and if you don't wear glasses anyway I'll just get a pair get a pair of these okay put them on then your shield okay you must have like double eye protection all right and not only that these make you look cool anyway when you initially start your lathe up, do not stand directly in front of it here. Stand to one side, like this, so you're not in the direct firing line of any loose parts that might want to come off, initially anyway. So, let's start it up. 100, 200, 300, the load is starting to move. Oh, 
That's just about 400. Don't want to go any faster than that. You can see the lathe is just moving, but this is a very heavy lathe. It weighs 300 kilos. So now we're going to start cutting this. Okay, so when you're cutting something that's uneven like this, uh, you can see the materials there, but you, you, you'll see a ghost in the material out here. So go very gently in until you find it. Okay. This is going to take some considerable time to get this down. So I'm just presenting the cutting edge, which is here, okay, to the material and pushing it in. Probably better see the, the you can see the the ghosting quite clearly on the camera. I mean, I'm, I'm looking in the, the little screen there, and I can I can see it fine. So there's the ghost in there. You can actually see it better than I can. And this, by the way, is a bowl gouge. Now, you're probably going to see some comments down below this video, put there by some so-called professionals. Well, I, I keep on saying this, my grandfather uh, started me wood turning, and he told me more than 50 years ago, more than 55 years ago, he said, boy, you use whatever tool you can in your arsenal to get the job done, providing it's safe and it works for you. I find a bowl, I use a bowl gouge for probably 80% of my turning. Whether it's on the outside of a bowl, the inside, whether it, it doesn't matter what it is. I just, I'm very comfortable using these bowl gouges or a 5 8 gouge, okay? Could be regarded as both. Uh, bowl gouge because it's extra long. Um, this is what's normally called a spindle gouge. Notice it's a lot shorter, okay? Okay, so we will uh, take this down a bit more and uh, progress into the turning. Okay, another thing you shouldn't do, and I'm going to demonstrate the correct way of doing it, is you stop your lathe, then you alter the tool rest. and spin it round to make sure it's not going to come in contact with the rest. Don't have the lathe running and alter your tool rest. That's a definite no-no. Next little tip. This video is full of tips, I think. <laughs> Next little tip. Always keep your chisel, okay, sharp. So about every probably 15 to 20 minutes, thereabouts roughly, you'll sort of notice it becoming a little dull, it's not cutting the same, you know, and I just give it a touch up on the grindstone. This incidentally is a, um, it's a partial fingernail grind, okay, not a full one, and this is what's commonly known as an English grind. One day I'll do a, a video on grinding chisels, or the way I do anyway. Okay, so we've got off quite a bit of material, still got a fair way to go. So um, 
I'll just continue doing this for the next probably half an hour before I get down to near true. Um, I was going to try and do a, um, a partial natural edge. We'll see how it goes. But um, I want to bore you with <laughs> machining this down. I think you've got the gist of what I'm doing here. And um, when I come to make the tenon on here, I'll put the camera back on. Okay. Okay, um, I've taken down quite a bit of material because there was a crack here with some material missing and also there's a piece here with some rotten material in uh, quite a bit missing so it's, the diameter's gone down quite a bit uh, to what I originally was hoping for so I've still got to take it down another quarter of an inch or so now um, but still it's going to be a beautiful bowl by the end of it um, so I'm just going to work up a little bit more on this now get rid of this gouge out of here and um, then I'll start doing some work on the back here and make that tenon. So, and I keep on saying this too through my videos, it, it, and that is the piece of material would determine the outcome, will determine the shape, the overall shape of the bowl. You can have one idea in your head, um, but as you're machining, you, you know, every minute you've got to be prepared to change your original idea because the wood will tell you what it's going to you know end up being like what it's going to end up looking like okay so we'll continue So this is the diameter of the tenon that I, I need. So what I'm going to do is, now if you watch closely, I, I only put one of these points and sort of mark the surface here. I don't put two. Because if you put two in, it's going to dig in and throw itself back out and what I'm, I'm actually doing is I'll score one side here and sight it with the other there we go okay there we are actually this one's sharp I think Roughly there. Now I've got a pencil. Get a little prominent or more prominent. Okay. So I'm going to machine this now down to this mark uh, because that's where my tenon's going to be. Nice big tenon for me to hang on to this to. And hopefully it won't come out the lathe at me. Okay, so this is where the jaw of the chuck is going to go into because I want a, a nice wide base on here. So if you see this part of the teeth of the chuck, it's gonna actually fit into there. So I'm just gonna machine out this slot here.
look at that. That is a beautiful bowl. Uh, there was some cracking on the inside. I probably, you know, a lot of people probably would have put epoxy resin in it, but uh, I don't like using epoxy resin, especially on some, you know, piece of wood like this. I think it gives it more character. You know, seeing these, um, these cracks in there, you can't do a lot about it. But uh, what a beautiful bowl with some beautiful wood. Look at the, the grain pattern in that. Beautiful. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, if you have, please press like, subscribe to my channel. And as you will probably already know by now, uh, on my channel, now there's over 300 videos, there's two channels. And um, wood turning, CNC routing, and everything else in between. So thank you for joining me today, and I hope you've liked this beautiful little bowl. Well, big bowl. <laughs> so, it's bye for now.